Hey, it's Bill. Welcome back to my channel, or for your first timers, welcome to my channel. Um, I've seen uh, some movement here um, on my channel, which I really appreciate. Uh, tell all your friends and family. Um, so today's a little different. So I had this plan. I was going to do, uh, to do this like seafood Newberg thing, which I know I've done before and it was real traditional. So I thought I'd kind of switch it up and do something a little fun and add a little to it. And You know, Mother's Day coming, this might be something worth trying. And if you don't, obviously there will be a link to my traditional seafood Newberg, which you can make just as well too. But anyway, so it's really simple. Um, basically I went through my freezer, my refrigerator, I'm like, God, what do I have, you know? Um, I know I've told you in the past I buy shrimp when it's on sale and freeze it. I got some uh, lobster tails that I had uh, frozen and you know everything else is kind of just here. So let's give it a try. So I got four tablespoons of butter in here. It's getting nice and toasty. And I got some yellow onion. I'd say about it's about three quarters of a cup. This is definitely not traditional, but I think it's gonna be really good. Let's, let's get that onion started. I wanted to put a little more, you know, a true Newberg, it's really uh, very plain, well I can't say plain sauce, but uh, the, only, the only bites you want are the uh, seafood. And so in my other one I put like uh, scallops and crab meat, because the crab meat kind of, and you know, I use lump crab meat, kind of very carefully stir it in at the end. So there are a lot of, a lot of things like that. I want to make this one a little more flavorful. And you're gonna see why in a minute or two here. All right, so we got that sucker rolling. I've got a couple um, garlic cloves, and you could use shallots. Shallots are great. But guess what? I had garlic. I got a bunch of garlic. It was really good at the farmer's market, uh, you know, the, the Sun Tree Produce place where I shop, so I bought a bunch of it. There, let's see. Just let that kind of soften. The onion is already pretty translucent, so I just want to put a little. Cook out that garlic a little bit. And I love garlic. I, I, you know, we were t I was talking this morning with my wife about how I, I just love garlic. I can't imagine not having garlic in my diet. It's probably really, it's really healthy for you too. It's like eating jalapenos and stuff, hot peppers. You know, good heart health stuff. And at my age, <laughs> all right. Pretty convinced, almost convinced that it's ready. And it's really funny, this is a whole different process because there are four tablespoons of butter in there, so um, it's really, how do I say, so it's, it's kind of cooking, it's not like you're really, you know, high heat and a little bit of oil uh, sauteing. So it kind of keeps it from burning. I'll turn the heat down here because Sometimes this pan takes a while to cool down. Because I need to put four tablespoons of flour in and we're going to start that whole roux thing. Alright, here we go. I 
Once again, I'm trying out my new uh, whisk here. It's worked pretty good so far, so I'm pretty happy. All right, so what do I always say about roux? You just got to cook it for a minute. Got to get that kind of floury, flavory taste out of it. All right. So, now I want to cook some spices in here for another minute. That's why I turned the heat down. So I have here, this is really simple. I have like almost a tablespoon of, of uh, smoked paprika. I've got uh, half a teaspoon of curry, a little bit of like a dash of nutmeg and a dash of cayenne pepper. We're going to toss it. Love that wooden handle. This is really going to help with some flavor. Smoked paprika is really great. My sister bought me a jar, and I'm like, what the heck do you do with this? Years ago. And I bought it ever since. So now, I got a cup, of, cup and a half of half and half. That's a lot of halves. Just want to get a little bit in here. I'm not doing this on a really, really high heat. This is pretty low heat. Drop my temperature quite a bit, so now I'm going to turn it up just a little bit so I can get some. I have a little bit of bubbly here. Alright, I got the last bit stirred in. I've got just a little bit of bubbling action here, so it's thickening up real nice. And now I want to show you what this looks like. So as you can see, Still pretty thick consistency, but it has a real beautiful color. Um, almost a pumpkin color to it. And this is what we want. We want pretty thick in there. Really smelling good. All right, so next thing I got, because remember, this is a Newberg. Got to have half a cup of dry sherry. That hits your nose pretty quick.
Oh. Gotta get me some fresh ground black pepper before I finish mixing this all up. Spoonfuls of tomato paste because that's what's really going to give us that dark color for the Newberg. Everything's blended so I can give up my whisk here. And helpful hint from Bill is the two cup measure I had the half and half in, I filled with water when I took it over the sink so I can plunge this in because I want to lay it in the sink because the wooden handle and even that, most whisk, you know, you can get water up in where the tines going. So it's much better to just put it in a measuring cup or something with water. Because you don't want all that, you don't want all that stuff to kind of dry on there. All right, so I need two bay leaves. And at this point, I got to make a decision because Newberg is supposed to be not quite this thick. Um, so I think I'm going to put about a quarter cup of half and half in here and stir it up and let's just see what it looks like. Okay, beautiful. So now I can actually turn it off. This pan will stay hot for a while. And let's keep on with the ingredients. Yeah, just a little cream here. Who knows? Maybe they did a lousy job measuring the flour. There's so many variables that can affect. All right. So I wanted to give a little flair, and actually I had some leftover. Okay, this is a little pancetta that I really crisped up this morning. And I got about three quarters of a cup. You probably didn't need that much. Peas, because I think peas go in everything. And yes, these are frozen peas that I let thaw. That's absolutely fine. No law against it. This is going to bake in the oven, so that's why I put the seafood in last and I really just want to stir it in because then we're going to bake it, which is my big reveal coming up. Still. I got myself, it's probably um, about 12 ounces of shrimp, you know, you buy a pound and then you peel it. Got about 12 ounces of shrimp, ice cold. 
two medium sized lobster tails that I just cubed up. I split them in half first and I split them up. I don't want to get all the juice in here. I strained it pretty good, but it's still, you know, you're going to get juice. It's always good to have a little soapy water in here. All right, so this is turned off. I mix this in. I just want to let it completely cool. We're going to be right back to show you how to put it together in about five minutes. All right, so here's my trick. I'm going to put some puff pastry on top of my mixture after I put it in a bowl, but I had to measure it first. So um, the dish is seven by nine. So I'm going to get this up on the pastry board. Gentle. Well, that's pretty easy. So that's nine inch by nine inch. So I'm going to have to take off a couple of inches here. Make sure it's all good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want square edges, right? And let me double check. Now that I pat it down. Just a hair too wide. I see it kind of has like a little bulge on this side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to very carefully take my pizza cutter. Sometimes the, just the force of uh, cutting it takes it out of square, so yeah. just be careful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go grab my stuff and put it in a bowl and top it off. And get it in the oven. Smells so good. Lots of shrimp, lots of good stuff in here.
Now before I put this pastry uh, sheet on top of here, I have one egg white. I want to get it whisked because I'm going to have to work kind of quick once I get it on there. Nice and foamy and mixed up. I don't need any more than that. Beautiful. It's going to rise, remember, it's puff pastry. So we've got plenty of room there. And I just want to get a nice color to it. So I just want to spoon it on, kind of back the spoon, smear it around. Putting any pressure on it because I don't want to submerge it. I know there's enough on here, now we just need to kind of work it around. To the edges. Let's make this puff paste really happy. Alright, so I don't know if you ever worked with puff pastry before, but basically what I want is about, I'm going to check about 35 minutes. Uh, I've got it on um, 375 degrees, so I'm using a convection oven, it'll speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to set it for 400 because if you set a convection oven to 400, it always takes 25 degrees off. I don't understand the reason behind that. But um, 375 should do it. In the oven, it's going to go. It's been 40 minutes. Let me take a look at it. Probably get it out. I'm sure it's done. So let me tell you, what, first of all, I wish you'd smell this, but that aside, once it cools a little bit and stops bubbling, um, because obviously I wouldn't try and dish it up right now because it'll be a hot mess. Um, what I would do is half and half and uh, get your spoon and scoop it out and I guarantee you that's beautiful pastry right there, man. It really does smell good. Oh, and everything in there looks so good. And all that seafood and peas and onion and garlic and cherry and spices. And I can really smell the uh, uh, smoked paprika, which is what I really wanted to do. And, uh, wow. This looks really good. I, I cannot wait for this to cool enough so I can try it. But in the meantime, I appreciate all your support. 
want you all to have a good day. And uh, tell your friends to subscribe because you already subscribed, right? So I don't have to worry about that. Tell them to ring the notification bell. And I love your comments. Uh, everything really makes me think. Some things are in the work. Um, trying to do some upgrades and some different kind of foods. And um, I'm going to see you next time with some more recipes. And don't forget, Mother's Day is coming. Pick one of my recipes. Do something nice for Mom. Have a great day.